One, two, three. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Yes, that was his face making those noises. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's uh, Nerd News. I'm Jeremy Massart, and this is Luke Zeman. Mm -hmm. today, today, our top stories for video game news is the uh, the new Batman Arkham Knight came out, and apparently it's a steaming pile of dog shit on the PC. So much so, that Steam actually pulled it. They pulled it hard. Yeah. Like, apparently there was an issue with frame rates, and that was, that's what was causing the crash, so everybody online said, drop it to 30 frame rates. That didn't help. It was still crashing. And so people started refunding it, so Steam pulled it. A lot of people refunded it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, if, if I bought a game for $60, well, first of all, mm -hmm. they pre-ordered it. Big mistake. Yeah. But, hey, the game should work when they come out. Yeah. Now, how many times do developers need to learn this lesson that if your game doesn't work, it's not going to sell? Mm -hmm. You might get those pre-orders, but you're not going to get anything else. And the issue was that Rocksteady outsourced the PC port whereas they did everything else in-house, so all the platform ports worked. PC, unfortunately, did not. <laughs> so hopefully they'll get that re uh, resolved. resolved pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. And our next news story today is um, over, the, over the week, Angry Joe did a, uh, an interview with the Battles programmer for uh, Total War Warhammer. And it was a really interesting interview. We learned mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of good new info. Uh, would you like to expand on that? A little um, bit? some of those info that we got is that it's going to be four factions on the very first installment. They're going to be doing it in three installments, I believe. Four, four playable factions. Yeah. They haven't said whether the other factions, factions are going to be, gonna in, be it, yeah. in the game. But the ones you can play as, starting off, is the Empire, which are the humans. Yep. The orcs, the vampire counts, and the dwarves. Dwarfs. Dwarfs. Yes, with an F. Yep, with an F. Just like all my grades. <laughs> but um, <shh>. okay. <laughs> it also include a lot of storytelling elements in the campaign, from what I've heard. From yeah, what yeah. The you went through. There's gonna be quest battles in the game, which is totally new for the Total War series. Mm -hmm. They they've always had historical battles, but those were not part of the campaign. But these are. Are kind of like historical battles in, in which they're in the lore. Um, like the Battle of Blackfire Pass, which is the one that they demoed at E3. It takes place at Blackfire Pass between orcs and, and the Empire, where uh, the Emperor Karl Franz fought off an orc war wog. I, wog, I believe yeah. it was a wog. That's what they call it in 40k at least, but... Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's the same the thing. Same. And, yeah, it's, that's that's the that's kind of like an orc crusade. Mm -hmm. It's a wog, although they say it much louder. Yeah. Then also, they're gonna try and make it so that each faction has their own units, which in Total War that's very unheard of because you know they have similar units and then some well factions have slightly the, different variations, but it's normally the same. Well, uh, the Total War they're all humans. In, mm -hmm. in every other Total War game. They've all been humans, save for war dogs, horses, and elephants. <laughs> but even all of those have been controlled by humans. This one, orcs are orcs. There's no human behind the orc mm -hmm. telling, unless you're playing an orc. But. Yeah. So they're going to have different units based on their actual factions and, and rather than story. Every faction is going to play completely differently. Like he was saying, the Empire is going to play more like a traditional Total War faction with politics and cities, and taxes, and all the normal empire stuff. But the orcs are going to play where you have to continually fight, mm -hmm. otherwise you will just crumble and fall apart, because the orcs are always fighting something. And if they're not fighting someone else, they're fighting each other. So, which is going to be really interesting to see how that works out in a Total War game, because do you actually conquer territory, or is it kind of like Attila, where you're just raising settlements everywhere and always? 
Yeah, and if you were to take another strategy game, like a concept from another one, uh, Age of Mythology, I believe it is, you play as the Norse, and for the Norse, the way you get all of your points in that game is by continually fighting or hunting. If you're not doing that, you're just going to suck at the game, playing that faction. And that's probably what they're going to do something similar with the orcs, probably. Could be. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see more on the vampire counts, because their army is actually mostly undead, mm -hmm. like zombies and skeletons and stuff. And they don't have morale. Like, they will fight to the last man. No. I mean, they're, they're kind of crap units for the most part. But with Total War, morale's a big thing. Yeah. That's how you win or lose. <laughs> yeah. But a skeleton's not going to run away. No, it's going to keep fighting. Yeah. So that, that should be really interesting. Maybe that's their big thing. Is that maybe that their, they don't have morale. Their they primary troops might not, but their generals might. Uh, well, yeah. The, 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 the actual vampire count yeah. would have... Morality. So you probably have to get to the generals to stop. But them. also, in the lore at least, if you kill the general, the army falls apart. Yeah. Because these zombies and these these skeletons are actually okay. controlled by that vampire count. Yeah. So if he goes down, they the magic that animates them ceases. All right. Which is, which would be really cool because then mm -hmm. you just snipe that general with some big magic move that kills him, mm -hmm. and the fight's over. Yeah. Which. Could be a huge weakness, but their their generals might just be uber uber awesome. Well, yeah, and maybe, take a, a foot of gork right to the face and like, ah, <laughs> suck it, nerds. Yeah, that's the other thing they're adding that's new to Total War magic. Yeah, um, I'm interested to see how it's gonna balance, mm -hmm. but I I trust them. Like I yeah. I believe they can do it. In the interview, they did mention, though, that the magic is going to be one big pool for your army. So you can't have a shit ton of magic users well, all you trying can, to play Well, you can, you'll just off. die. Yeah. Because you'll run out of mana if you keep trying to use the same pool with multiple people. Yeah. And and why would you even want to do that? Yeah. It's like having an army of nothing but archers. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing, you know, against peasants. <laughs> then it works fine. But. Exactly. And then, obviously, they're doing a, a animation overhaul with the game, because they went into detail on how their units are going to animate completely differently than before with what they're calling a, what was it, like a kinetic front line? Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. The, lots jumping, apparently. Everything jumps. <laughs> Which it, sounds cool, I mean. Yeah, they're adding the animation to make it look more like I can see how that. eventually that would just become cheesy. Because mm -hmm. if everything, if it's like, <laughs> ah, ah, and it gets old. And, yeah, I don't know. But we'll see. Yeah, I think it's more they're adding something to make it so that there's some kind of an animation when they engage, is what they're, they were trying yeah. to explain, yeah. more or less. Yeah. And then, apparently, also, the big thing, the really big thing, is agents fight alongside you. People who don't play Total War don't yeah, know that, how big of a deal that really is. Yeah, that's, that's really <laughs> awesome. I like that. And there is n no passage of time in this game, mm -hmm. unlike all the other ones. So your agents will never die of old age. And if you're a Total War player, it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Because it's always, you get the agent to where you want them, and then they're, they die of old age. Because mm -hmm. they're like 85. And they die of like pancreatitis or something. And for those who don't know who, or who don't play Total War, what an you agent should. is, is basically like a spy or a politician to some extent, yeah, they, who does really cool things to cities and armies to benefit you before you go into battle. Or they give you morale boosts to, say, your actual armies as well. Because if you have them in embe embedded into an army, then when you would go into battle, your army got like little special bonuses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But they, the agents themselves never actually fought. No. So that's what makes it interesting, is that now they're an actual like hero. Like if, if you're playing, say, Warcraft, or Warcraft 3, rather, yeah, where you had hero heroes, heroes, that's what they would be like now. Yeah. Which is really cool. I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. This one sounds like it's a it's a much needed breath of fresh air yeah. in the Total War franchise. They were starting to get kind of stale, especially mm -hmm. the last two or so. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for video game news this week. Yep. It's a pretty dry front today. So next up on your news, we have our weekly dose of some TV show news. Uh, first on the docket is Hannibal after their third season, will be canceled, NBC announced. Uh, the big thing that came out of this was there's a lot of hardcore fans to the show 
who have started a petition to try and save it. And apparently so far that hasn't gone so hot. It hasn't been saved. So the company themselves or the producers and whatnot of the show are trying to get it picked up by, say, Netflix so they can continue the show's story because they still have elements of the story that they want to evolve because it's been a, mostly a very unique kind of serial show, in a sense. And that's pretty much it. Go sign that petition, I guess. Yeah. I mean... Not sure where you find it, but we'll try and figure something out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Link may be in the description. Yeah. Like, I like the show. It's different and unique, but it took me like three, epi- three to four episodes to even get into it the first season. And now I'm kind of at that stage where I'm like, I wish they would have just found a way to end it the second season. And this third season, I've only watched two episodes so far, so I'm not sure how good it's going to end up being. So it sucks for if it ends up being as good as, like, prior seasons have been. Uh, Then uh, next on the docket, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. announce the theme of their next season coming out in September. Uh, They're going to go with the Secret Warriors, which, for those who don't know, is a group of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that have superpowers, run by Daisy Quake Johnson, whom, spoiler alert, is Sky in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's pretty much all that there is for that, because it's pretty short news. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the big news that I think actually dropped last week, but has been getting more gameplay this week, is Daredevil Season 2. They've announced John Barenthal, Shane, from The Walking Dead, is going to be playing the Punisher. And he's been saying stuff along the lines of he's going to be giving it his all to play the role. Well, because I would he knows how certainly he hope is. so. He's getting paid for it. Yep. And with the steam that's been getting, it seems like it's a really good choice as well because he looks pretty similar to Thomas Jane. Yeah. Which is yeah. A, a good movie <laughs> to an extent. Uh, well, no, it is the good movie. <laughs> yeah. The other one's terrible. The one with uh, what's his name? Guy. I don't even Guy know. from Rome. Yeah. That and movie, other things that which, I can't think That of. movie is more of the popcorn flick version. Yeah, of it was bad. The first one bad. is more of the acquired taste one, because it does have some really bad decisions it made, but it was still good, even in, besides those bad decisions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's pretty much it for TV news. <laughs> yeah, well. So in movie news this week, the, uh, the new Star Trek movie, Star Trek Beyond, has officially started production. Mm-hmm. So, looking forward to that one. When is that one coming out? I don't even remember. Oh. Sometime next year. Yeah. I think, the, I think July or June. I think it was a J, J month. It, it was in the summer. 2016. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Universal so look, Studios, look for that. I believe. Yeah. It's yeah, it would be Universal. No, it's Paramount. Or Paramount. Yeah. Paramount. They yeah, own the rights to, yeah. to Star Trek. So, yeah, Paramount. It's going to be their big blockbuster. Or that's yeah. their whole thing. Uh, Simon Pegg is the one who wrote the screen play for it, which is different for him because he normally writes like comedy films and comedies. Yeah, but he's a big Star Trek fan, so and and he's good. Yep, I I like his movies, and he's in the sh- in the movies. So well, yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same cast from the last two movies, obviously. So yeah, look for that one sometime in twenty sixteen. <laughs> And uh, the there apparently there's gonna be a rampage movie. Rampage for all those kids of the eighties and nineties. The video game the, where you the, grow into giant monsters and beat the crap out of buildings yeah. and beat people. Okay, that's cool, I guess. The big news about it as to why it's even news is apparently Dwayne the Rock Johnson has been cast in the movie. So the big question is that people are asking is whether he's going to be one of the monsters saying in the video games when you die you transform into this little itty bitty dude who apparently is from a part of a lab problem thing (laughs) very articulate (laughs) yep as always yeah um (laughs) that would be cool i i'm not sure that's the way they're gonna go with it no i think he's gonna be surviving yet another disaster and the, the the movie's gonna be completely about the humans, rather than the monster, just like every mm-hmm. monster movie, and it's going to be mediocre at best. Yeah. That's my prediction. Most likely. They're probably going to use it off of the uh, steam that San Andreas picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to so, make yeah. the same mistakes Godzilla made, where you see five minutes of Godzilla and an hour and 45 minutes of some 
douche nozzle without any personality. Just like me. <laughs> and our next story is they finally have somebody to replace what's his name as Spider Man? Andrew Garfield. Yeah, that guy. Because saying the internet's been blowing up the past few weeks over every little tiny mention of who the heck Spider Man's going to be. It doesn't matter. If there was a rumor, everybody jumped on it. For the longest time, the internet was claiming that it was Asia Butterfield or whatever his name is. What? <laughs> Butterfield? What? I don't remember his name. <laughs> I don't know. It's Tom Holland, apparently. Yeah. This guy. This random kid. This guy right here. That we have no clue I've who he is. I've never heard of him. No. So hopefully it doesn't suck. Then again, I've never, I, I did, I had not heard of Andrew Garfield either before. Yeah. True. The Amazing Spider-Man. But also, Marvel's been doing a good job at casting directors and casting people in their roles. But it's so, not Marvel doing it, is it? It depends, because they're in contract. They're supposed to be doing part of it as well with Sony. So it all depends on who, out of Sony and Marvel, had the last say. Essentially. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens with all that nonsense. And then, on a brighter note, Suicide Squad, Jared Leto, as a Joker, is apparently going full method. And in the process of going full method, he's pulling pranks on yeah. his castmates, even when he has to leave set. He, apparently, he left a love letter addressed to Margot Robbie, who's playing Harley Quinn, as if she is Harley Quinn. At the end of the letter, it told her to open a box. The box contained a live rat. Which is the best gift <laughs> ever. Rats yeah. are awesome. And apparently, he's also sent really weird Instagram pictures of, like, dead animals <laughs> to his castmates. <laughs> With little jokes equipped to them. And this rat, now apparently, is the, is the set's pet. Because they named it Splinter. After the turtle's master. So yeah, there's that. And that that's movie news. Yep. <laughs> and that's almost about it for this episode of Nerd News. Uh, but we do have some fun stuff for you that will be posted down here for you to click on. Just some fun nerdy stuff that we found over the week. One includes a Doctor Strange fan-made in movie intro. They took apart comics and made mo really awesome motion graphics out of it. Yeah, it was really awesome. You guys should check it out. Uh, I don't know this. We should find out who did that. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, the link will be down there for you to click on. Um, also, we there over uh, Father's Day was this past Sunday, and a dude posted a video he made in honor of his son of him basically being Spider Man. Yep, it's called uh, Spider Dad. Yep. Go figure. <laughs> And it's 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 pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's nice, it's charming, very warm and fuzzy. Yep. And it's in the same veins as say Punisher Laundry Day. I'd say quality wines. No, no, no. It's, it, it was pretty decent for a fan. It, it was good, yeah. but it, it was not. <laughs> it was not that. <laughs> All right. Either way, you should check those out. And that's the end of our show. Yep. Come back for next. Next week. Yep. See you next week. Stuff things, tacos. Ooh, tacos. I could go for a taco. <sighs> 30 minute drive. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Get the taco. <laughs>